Good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to the Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019 Selectman's meeting. There's all the selectmen are here as the town manager, the town clerk, town planner, and two members of the public. Is, uh, please rise with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we have two sets of minutes. Is um, May twenty eighth. Is uh, the members that were present at that one with myself is. Ken and Mark. I'll make a motion that we accept the May 28th, 2019 minutes as presented. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? And two abstentions, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we have, oh, where's the other one? There it is. <coughs> Our July 9th, 2019. And that one was present with myself and Noah and Ken. I will make the motion to accept the minutes from July 9th, 2019 as presented. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? And two abstentions. Thank you. Um, that brings us to the first public comment. If you have a public comment, please step to the microphone. State your name. Goodwin, 65 Sullivan Street. Um, I just had a question for Mr. Pendergast. Um, on June 5th, I sent you an email. I just wondered if you received it. What was the email about? It was about the parking lot next door to us. Parking lot next door. 71 Sullivan. No, 71 Sullivan. Yes. I think I sent it to you, Steve. Didn't I? In turn, send it over to you for. A reason. I don't know. I, don't I remember know. receiving it, but what can I answer? What question do you have? Well, I just want to make sure you got it because um, I didn't hear any response from you. Yeah. And uh, didn't know. It kind of leads me into tonight. Um, <clears throat> the um, last time I was here, I had asked um, about an email that was sent to Mr. Wright, and Mr. Eldridge about uh, from the planning board regarding the parking lot situation over there. Yeah. And they received it, and I had asked if it was shared with the rest of the board, and Mr. Manning said he had not seen it. And I was right. wondering, have you seen it, Mr. Manning? Not that I can recall. Um, if you don't mind me asking, Mr. Kinnear, have I'm you not, seen it? Not from you, no, sir. Mr. Pendergast? Not that I can recall. Okay. Mr. Cobb? No, I have not received it. here for you. Okay. Come on up. I didn't get you guys because I know you already got it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make this quick. I'm going to read it just for the record. Steve and Tom, um, this was Mr. Bullissimo. On behalf of the town plan, uh, the planning board, and it was copied to the town manager, Mr. Wright, Mr. Bellissimo, Mr. Feldman, and the code enforcement officer. And it reads, Steve and Tom, I'm following up on a parking lot on Sullivan that's being used for the rec field. Ms. Sheldon came to our planning board meeting last night and spoke at the public comment. As you know, she is the abutter. She asked the board not to follow through on the town's application. I, t I told her we were at a standstill and did not have the application on the agenda for this meeting. And we're waiting to see the next step the town makes. She also indicated that she is continuing to pursue lit litigation to get the town to cease using that property as a parking lot. It was the consensus of the planning board last night, as it was on May 2nd, that the town discontinued use of the lot for parking until the conditional use application is approved for a parking facility. I know there was an attempt at limiting the lot to two cars, which the former boarding home was permitted, but that is clearly not enforceable. 
There are way more than 22 cars on a given weekend day. We have no way to control how many vehicles will park there, short of stationing someone there to count cars and turning people away. We recently had a property owner in town who had a pending application before the planning board who was using the property without proper approval. The CEO gave him a stop work order immediately. We were able to work with the owner and eventually got this approved. My point is, if we hold individual property owners accountable to the land use ordinance, we should hold the town to the same standard. I'm not trying to be difficult, but Ms. Sheldon and her husband bring up genuine concerns and the fact that they've retained an attorney could end up costing the town more in the long run. I'm just trying to do what is best for the town and looking out for everyone. I think continuing to ignore our own ordinances does not set a good precedent. So quickly, just like to ask um, you members that did not receive a copy of this, what it's like to represent a town that does not enforce its own ordinances in violation. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? And then we'll move on. We have no public hearing. There's reports of committees. It's, we have BCTV committee. Good evening. I just wanted to give you an update on where BCTV is at this point. Um, the studio is almost completed. We've got some light fixtures to kind of move around. The green screen is up. I've got to test that out. But we've already recorded our first program. And our first program is going to be updates from the town manager's desk. And we recorded that this week. Today I recorded the fire department and police department. My goal is to start highlighting each of our departments, what they do, some of the questions that have been asked or that we've heard here at our meetings. Um, so the police and fire, what I asked them was basically, how many staff do you have, full-time, part-time, per diems? Um, what type of training is involved? to get into these positions. And one of the things that I heard from uh, Chief Town today was that they're really looking for some additional officers on the per diem basis. Um, so I will be putting that out there. Um, the other thing that I did today was the library event. They did a main search and rescue. So we're keeping busy over the summer. And the goal is to head right into the fall with hopefully working with the middle school. And I'll be contacting um, Mike Roberts uh, to set up a meeting for that to see if we can get kids involved this year. Um, some of the other things we're looking at are going to be potentially a new sound system so that we can do additional microphones over here. I haven't got enough spaces in there to put all the mics that we have currently, so we're sharing them. Um, and then I'm also still working on the FCC. They'll be voting on August 1st. That is when this will be coming to a head on um, the rules regarding franchises, franchise fees. Um, they're still planning on charging for line drops, but we don't know what those charges will involve. So every drop to police, fire, schools here um, could potentially be charged. Um, and that will come back to the town as a fee. They're still looking at charging for some of their lines, so potentially from here to the head end in Portsmouth and back, they may have to pay for that as well. They have decided that the equipment is necessary to broadcast. I thought that was kind of nice of them. You know, we, we do need that. Um, other things that are going on, I'm still looking for people, anyone who's willing to learn how to edit. I would love to teach someone else because I am getting behind and if we keep doing programs like I'd like to, I'm going to need some more editors. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're moving right ahead. Any questions? Is the editor a paid position? Um, it's a stipend position. Um, so it's uh, $11 an hour and I've, I've budgeted for so many hours per month and I'm trying to remember that off the top of my head, and I can't. Um, so I've got so many hours per month that I can pay for. Um, and what I'm looking for is the basic shows that run from beginning to end, and really it's it's lighting, sound, that type of fixing, as opposed to net cutting and kind of editing process. Anything else? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Terry. I'm in Vision Burway. <coughs> 
I guess I could have done it since I went to the last meeting. But right. welcome back. <laughs> we got a couple more spots left. If anyone else wants to join, we meet on the second and fourth Tuesday or Thursday of the month at six o'clock. Um, the only thing I have is uh, we're eleven days away from the first uh, downtown concert, uh, Texas Pete Country Rock Band. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you'll notice on our Facebook page, uh, we've with Elise, um, who was here last meeting. She's uh, been incredible with helping with our branding, new logos. Um, so for the event, we're gonna have t-shirts. Um, we work with a brewery to do um, coasters, stickers, shirts. We even have uh, sweatshirts and onesies for babies with the Berwick logo. Um, and I think that's all I got. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. Yeah, so <laughs> with sponsorships, um, we had like 15 different companies uh, sponsor, and with in-kind services, we just about made our goal of kind of making the money back what we spent this year. So that means there'll be a year two, as long as it goes. The actual concert goes well, I think it will. It, um, it, uh, you had sent out the email earlier to the committee members about volunteering for the event is um, sign me up. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. I'll be set up and break down. I don't want to be an MC or anything like that. <laughs> we have no department reports. And it says we have Dave Andreessen, proposed changes. But <laughs> I'm not Dave Andreessen. No, uh, this year, um, the planning board agenda, it's been, it's been pretty packed. And um, instead of us trying to jam things through and kind of rush, we're just gonna take our time. There's, there's no land use ordinance amendments that need to be done for November. So we can hold off. Until Thanks, Thanks Dave. Makes Thanks. it easier. <laughs> Thanks, James. Um, Unfinished business, the estate of Emily Rep, an easement deed, is if you fill us in with that. We um, had our attorney uh, look at what we had been given by an attorney representing the estate. Um, he tweaked it and uh, they did quite a bit of research, uh, learned quite a bit about that, uh, the old Highland Avenue or Highland, Highland Street. Street. Yep. Um, it's a, I would call it a paper street. It's really a public right of way uh, that we just continued to use and, and uh, maintenance, but there's a house up in there, so they use that to get back and forth onto Logan Street. Uh, but there are some, there's a covenant that goes with that uh, because of um, wetlands up behind there by the Penny Pond. So it's a little bit more complicated than it was. And uh, the people that were purchasing the home purchased it um, without us having signed off on the uh, easement. Uh, but they still have to, they'll have to be filed according to our attorney and um, we'll just wait until we hear from their attorney and what they, they want to do. So right now it's on hold uh, and that's it. Once I get some more information, I'll bring it back to the board. Very good. Um, and town manager's report. We should start seeing some road work taking place. Um, prepare yourself for Pine Hill Road. In mid-August, it will be a lot of equipment and we'll be tearing up the road. And the same with Worcester. Public Works um, has replaced over 67 culverts in all this uh, spring and summer. A lot of it's up on that road, on Pine Hill. They have a few more on Worcester Road. Um, so there's a lot of work that's going to be taking place, but it will be a vast improvement to what we have. So um, I think they were going to they were going to pay finish paving Wentworth first, and then uh, Logan, and then they'll start on Pine Hill. And, uh, it'll be quite a project. Um, we had a we had a heating engineer in the building today um, that we hired to to look at our system and look at our town hall uh, because we shut down the uh, furnace because of the piping, the old pipes. So. Uh, he was here a good part of the morning, walking around, taking notes. So hopefully we come back with something that we can use to make improvements. And we'll talk more about that during the workshop. Um, Jack Floyd's last day was last Thursday. Uh, we've been through the interview process for a new finance director. We offered the position uh, to a uh, 
woman by the name of Lisa Vargas. She has 20 plus years experience as a finance director um, and her first day will be next Monday. And we're very, very excited to have her on board. Um, I think she's gonna uh, be a good fit. And where, she, where is she from? She's from Lyman. She had spent uh, quite a few years in Lyman, I think 10 uh, there as their treasurer, finance person. Um, and she was in Arundel for a while. So she's worked with our software. She's very familiar with municipal. Um, so she'll be a good fit. Um, James and I were up on 71 Sullivan Street today with the uh, uh, engineer, uh, uh, Todd Gammon from Blaze. Uh, we've had the property surveyed, so we know exactly where all the pins are. And um, I'll send you that for the uh, layout. Um, and what uh, Todd's gonna do is do a little engineering just for creating a temporary parking lot, which is what the conditional use is. Uh, and he hopefully will be for the planning board um, the first or? Probably 15th. The 15th. So hopefully uh, we can get that squared away. We are on the schedule to have six foot fencing on both sides to help block for the neighbors. Um, people have to keep in mind this, this is a very seasonal parking lot. We don't plow it in the winter, so there won't be any activity there. Uh, so uh, once, once we get the conditional use, we'll have a better idea of um, how many people can park in there and uh, make sure it's, it's kept going. But it should keep the lights out of their driveway, out of their home, uh, be quite an attractive fence. So uh, is that. Um, also want to mention that uh, James Bellissimo was awarded a $500 uh, scholarship for education from the main town and city managers. I was hoping it would be a little bit bigger, but they had quite a few good applicants. Uh, they had 1,500 to give out, and uh, usually they either do two or one. And this year they had some good applicants, but James was able to get uh, one for 500. So Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Which is good. Um, and that's all I have for now. Um, reference communications. I have a couple letters from Comcast. It is uh, one explaining to the municipal offices what to do if your cable line falls down on the building. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody in town knew what to do there. So, And the other one is that um, Xfinity On Demand will no longer be available to TiVo devices. So there's my communications. What devices? TiVo. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, me either. It's okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have cable anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, that brings us to accounts payable. <clears throat> Account payable warrant 1955 for June 30th, 2019 for the amount of $41,559.12. The water warrant 0955 for June 30th, 2019 for the amount of $3,000. $504.60. Account payable warrant 2002 for July 11th, 2019, for the amount of $850,449.49. Water warrant 002 from July 11th, 2019, for the amount of $5,000. $717.88. A payroll warrant, 2002 for July 11th, 2019, for the amount of $74,022.05. Payroll warrant, zero, uh, 2003 for July 18th, 2019, for the amount of $64,529.63. The water warrant 003 for July 18th, 2019 for the amount of $86.90. <clears throat> An account payable warrant 2003 from July 18th, 2019 for the amount of $102,368.55. They'll make a motion that we pay our bills. Second your motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Is, uh, I just want to make a quick comment is I was recently given a box full of 
old town reports and uh, I started going through them today. I found one that goes back to 1871, mm -hmm. but I also found the one from 100 years ago, 1919, and the town budget at that time was just under $30,000, <laughs> 29000 and few odd cents. And the biggest expense, I believe, was roads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it never changes, I guess. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> Um, so that brings us to new business. This is MMA annual election. Is this is uh, for the executive board. Uh, you have three people uh, who have put their names in. Um, and for once, I don't know any of them, which is unusual, because usually you have at least a town manager in there, but uh, you have uh, elected officials. So just keep in mind, if any of you would love to serve in, on the executive board, you're always looking for fresh faces. But, <laughs> I didn't see anybody put their hands there's actually, No. There's actually two town managers. Oh, just one, David Sear? And then you oh. got the, the VP, James Gardner. Oh, oh one. What's that for? Oh, Vice President. Vice President. Oh, okay. I don't know him. I think Easton's up north, the county yeah. area. Mars Hill, obviously, is. Hamden's up near Bangor. Town of Fayette, so just outside Augusta. So <clears throat> we have vice president, one term, is one vote, one person, James Gardner Jr., town manager of town of Easton. And then executive committee members, three years terms, and we vote for three of them, and there's three people running. John Beekman, chair of the select board, town of Fayette. David Sear, town manager, town of Mars Hills. And Ivan McPite. Mayor of the town of Hamden is um, so. Is anybody else want to run, or should we just nominate and elect these people? Yeah. All right, we need an official vote on that. Uh, yes, you do. Yep. All right. Is um, <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we uh, submit a ballot for the MMA. Executive Committee members and Vice President to those names that were presented by uh, to us. Second motion. Does that have to be individual or can we do all? Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second. Yep. Any discussion? No. No. Nope. All those in favor? Great. Mm -hmm. Um, we have the 2018 commitment correction. If you explain exactly I'll what explain the commitment correction is. Um, when we did the TIF district, um, we were given a uh, total town valuation for that district. Um, and when the assessor gave the value, it included uh, town buildings, which are not taxable. So that was one of the mistakes that was made. And then we had uh, the House of Hope uh, before they purchased it. Uh, when the church moved out, it became a taxable piece of property. And then the House of Hope came on board and uh, it was a non-taxable, so it should have been taken out. So it, these were adjustments that were made. We had a uh, very diligent auditor from the Revenue Department who came in and she spent great number of hours here one day uh, going through everything with a fine tooth comb and she found that uh, so we have to recommit uh, it, that amount that change and it actually it doesn't change the tax rate or anything it comes out it goes back into the uh, undesignated, not the undesignated fund, the overlay so it's just a matter of it's a paper shuffle and numbers it doesn't really impact us at all. It, it was a good find, and, and she's been finding things in other communities, I hear, so she really knows her business. And it's a good thing. Get so are we voting to? You have to, you have to vote and sign. It's, it's like doing a tax commitment. It's just a supplemental.
So. Um, um, a motion to accept the commitment for what is this? 2018? Yep. Yeah. Correction. Right. Commitment correction. I make a motion that we accept the 2018 commitment correction as presented by um, Don Assessor. I'll second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. And there's quite a few places to sign on this. Um, we have no quick claim deeds, installment contracts. Um, second public comment. Ken, you have anything to say? Yes. <laughs> Please get up. I figured you, since you came down, is uh, always glad to have you. Glad to be here. I only have one question. I just got my letter from the town on uh, my assessed value yes. of the house and property. Now, how do they determine that? They uh, use. Is that just a drive by? They go by and they look at the house on uh, condition and all of that, and they check to see if there's any new additions or any supplemental things on the property. Um, and they go back and they, they have the most recent sales over X number of years, so over the last few years, they do a comparative uh, and then they, they make adjustments to what the fair market value has been and what things have been selling for. So, okay. I believe we had the assessor here two weeks ago or? Yeah, or last meeting. Yeah. He said the average increase for the town was about 11%. Well, mine went up about $20,000. How much? About 20000 well, is um, in, the, in the letter they said, you know, you can make an, come down, make an yeah, appointment, make an appointment. And yeah, talk to them. Yeah. Uh, so. I was just curious how they did it. Yeah. There's a, there's a process that they use. Because I very a previously where from the town or the assessor that said that he would be calling when they were going to be coming by to assess right. my property. But never received anything. That's why I'm just curious. Then I get the letters with the assessment on it. What the hell's going on? Yeah. yeah, they've been working on this for the last two and a half years. So uh, I didn't think they were going to call everybody because it's hard. The letter, the letter came out and said that they. Yeah, so that's why I asked a question earlier before the meeting started about it. They said they'd call? Yeah. 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 If they needed to enter the residence. True. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, that's Thank right. Thank you. And uh, a, lot of it, a lot of it has been based on is. Um, prior sales in the area. And as Paul was here at the last meeting, he was explaining that um, not every neighborhood saw the same increases. Is, um, you know, because I joke that I'm dragging my neighborhood down, hopefully, so. <laughs> okay, I was just, just curious what was going on. Not Thank a problem. Not a problem, glad to answer your questions. Thank you. Um, we have no executive session. Nope. Is other business non agenda items? None. Is, uh, we have an adjournment, but we also have a workshop on uh, capital improvement <coughs> is, uh, is afterwards. So, okay. second. All those in favor? Mark wants to stay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Um, we're going to continue on with the. Uh, yeah, Live, right?
We on there? <laughs> That's a little small. I thought I enlarged it, but it's still pretty small. Um, it's good size. I wanted to do the, huh? It's good size. <laughs> I wanted to sit down with all of you to, to look at these because uh, we, we seem to be having some increases coming our way in, in costs. And uh, I broke them up by immediate needs and then uh, longer term needs. But I'll go through one, all of them. The town hall, like I said earlier, we had an engineer come in. Um, that was really recommended by the company that does our services, our boiler and stuff, to really look at the system because over the last two years, we've been spending money on replacing and fixing pipes. Um, and that boiler is a good boiler. You only put it in there, I think, six years ago. Um, but um, and he even said today that's a good boiler. You could convert that to steam or you can convert it to water if you had to. But that's not the issue. The issue is the piping. It's 1938 vintage. Um, and it's uh, and we were, with the old radiators. And it's become a real expense. And, and we really need to do something with it. The um, company that services it uh, gave us uh, ballpark numbers of to, just to do the downstairs floor and, audit, and parts of the auditorium would be about $56,000 uh, to do some of the pipe replacement. Um, and that's all exposed, so it doesn't really get into ripping out walls and things like that. When you get to the second and third floor, now you're, in the, you're ripping out walls, and, it, and it's gonna, it'll be more cost prohibitive, they said, to do it that way. Uh, so they're recommending that their thought process, uh, first off, was so the 56,000 could take care of the auditorium heat um, and downstairs. Uh, the upstairs, they uh, thought probably we could put in three heat pumps and take out the radiators. That would take care of all our air conditioning needs on those two floors. Um, and heat. Yeah, and heat. So it like, sounds like a cost effective way to do it, but I think I'll, before we move on it, we probably should look at what this engineer, and he is an engineer, he's not just a consultant, he seems to think like an engineer, but you know what I mean. Um, so th that's coming up, and we have some funding in the Lena Clark Fund for the, uh, our uh, interest that we earn each year. I'm not sure we are going to have enough to do everything, but it depends on the cost of what we do. So that, that's something that's coming up, and it needs to be done before the heating season starts. Um, and believe me, when my air conditioner in my office I'm, is vintage, it goes off and on all the time. There's, money, all right, the air there's money right now in that um, for heat pumps and electricity main. Electricity main yeah, there's some, there's some uh, uh, reimbursement. Yeah, right. I saw. So we, we will qualify for that. Right, you should. You should, yeah. So um, th that's another, uh, and they'll take care of all that. They submit the uh, right. everything in. We'll just get a reduced rate. Um, the other thing uh, coming up is the public work fuel tanks. We had been told by Portland uh, Pipe or Pump that uh, we could uh, keep these underground for the next five years. Uh, they have to come out and test them, but it didn't seem to be an issue. Uh, and, uh, we had planned to put $20,000 away for the next five years, and that would cover the cost to put, we take those out and put new ones in. Well, they came out to test them after we committed 20,000 for the next five years. Um, and the cost of just to get them up to snuff to what the DEP requires was gonna cost us around 40,000. Yeah. And to put new double tanks above ground uh, and do everything was a total of 50,000. So it doesn't make sense to, to do the 40,000 and throw that away and then have to pull them out. So I've got to come up with money. If we do have 20,000 from this year's budget that we're in, I'm, I still need to come up with another 30. And I'm not sure we're, we're going to get that funding. It, do we have a deadline to pull those tanks out? Uh, we have to have those tanks uh, up to snuff. Oh, right now, 
So we need to do something and either spend the point <coughs> and get them so we it can get them make through sense. the next fight. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. No. Are we have the money, the contingency, we were just talking about it. We do have some contingency funding, yeah. So it's something that's coming and I, I, they, our group, our public works is going to do some of the excavation work uh, and, and our uh, electrician will do some of the wiring. So we'll save a little bit of money there. Uh, it has to be done because we're going to move the pumps and everything to a uh, spot um, uh, closer to towards the uh, salt shed. The uh, salt, salt shed. On, yeah, away from the yeah, away from the road. Farther from the river. <laughs> yeah, and farther from the river. Hmm. But it's going to require us to have a containment, right? You know, uh, stuff in case we spill and all that. Yeah. But so it'll be a better solution, I think, than what we have now. And we can still use the same pumps, so we don't have to replace those. You know, uh, so that's coming. And I, I, once I have a firm price, I'll get that started. Where do we get a price from? From them. Well, the pump? Yeah. Is that the only one we can get a price from? That's the only company that I, we've dealt with since we've been here. So. Is there, is there um, who the heck do I see working on uh, Cumberland Farms of the Irving? That's, um, they're out of Massachusetts, aren't they? No, no, GavTech. They're out of Maine. Who is it? GavTech. GavTech? G-A-F-T-E-K. GavTech. Yeah, I was going to go over there. Nice to get another price, though. <coughs> get a price from them. The we have time. I mean, I just don't want to get to do get it in the winter. It, yeah, right. Get it done before it's freeze. cold. Before yeah. the snow flies. So th those are, again, those. these are more immediate uh, issues. Uh, we'll have to... We're going to put a roof on it and, and fence it in. Yeah. Uh, so it's a yeah. double wall tank, right? Double wall yeah. tank. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be two tanks, one for diesel, one for gas. Um, then we go into longer term projects. Do we, do we have to have pumps? What other towns do that don't? Like South Berwick doesn't have pumps, do they? Who? I don't think South Berwick does. No, they have a, a gas card that they uh, use. And so what's what's... Why can't we do that? What, I mean, just out of curiosity, why can't we do we that? We could, but it's just going to require us to do more work, keep track of it. Um, it's a company. You have to pay a company who kind of does all the billing and all We do that, that WEX. We What's use that? WEX cards. Yeah, that's what South Berwick uses. Yeah, we use WEX. It's pretty easy. They just send you a bill once a month to pay the bill. Yeah. Something to look into. I mean, we comparatively are, speaking. I think we did what? look into it, but I'll go back to it again. It's pretty easy. Pretty I mean, easy, but it can be expensive too. Why? That's what I've been told. The, the cost of well, the, the expenses, the cost of the gas, but you're not paying any more than when you pay the gas pump. Well, who, who is? What's the Wex car? Who's it? Wex is just they just manage. They just they manage the billing. Right, but you don't charge any more for the gas. If you're paying two sixty five at companies, that's what you're paying on the card. And actually, some months they have a special. If you, they have a special. It's actually a pretty good way of doing it. Perry would. Yeah, I know Perry knows. We've talked about it, and we. I'll go back and look at it. You look I, at it first. I didn't think it was that. Yeah. And now, when we buy the the fuel in bulk, we get it at a discount. We get a discount price. Right. It goes out to a bit. Right. So. Right. Right. But we still, you got to figure in. <coughs> Fifty grand. Yep. Plus cleaning up the mess we got. Right. We got to take the old tanks. Those out. tanks have to come out within so the next ten years. Another. Yeah. Whatever that cost, take them out, right? Yeah, I don't it's know. It's all going to be figured in. Yeah. So, I don't know. Okay. just to keep you on top of it. Thanks, Steve. Um, Longer-term needs uh, is we have an ADA compliance issue with uh, the uh, chair that we have. The lift? It's old. Yeah. <laughs> it's ancient. And the it gets serviced every year, but the, when it breaks down, it's the, they are having a harder time getting parts for it. And, and we really need to do something different. I, I put 150000 because we talked about an elevator. Um, I've been in touch with Casco Elevator. He's supposed to set up a time to come out to give me a cost and, and look at the location. But that's a, that's a cost that we're going to have to incur. I, I had planned to try to address that in the coming next year. Uh, but again, I, priorities. But we need to become ADA compliant, and there may be some grant funding. I haven't started I've started looking in some funds, but uh, I'm not sure how much is out there for that. 
um, but it's, it's something um, and we could temporarily if, if the chair fails uh, we could put up some kind of a ramp that goes in the back into the auditorium mm -hmm. it's going to recommend you know to get us through but that sh I don't think that should be a permanent my feeling it shouldn't be a permanent solution no, no. Um, so keep that in mind that that I thought that was on the far horizon but uh, it's probably coming up closer to we need to start really thinking about putting it in the budget um, infrastructure uh, the MS4 project we have until 2022 to do this project and get it done uh, the estimate that uh, uh, Malone and McCroom has given us um, is 1.3 million to do that whole project um, so that's it's a lot of money um, and this I we James and I kind of put our heads together to look at how where we can get that funding is uh, EDA funding we might you know uh, might be able to get some from CDBG that's very competitive um, ED, and then there's rural development rural development has grants some grants that, uh, we might we qualify for and then they have low interest loans like the bond bank they're competitive with them I, I don't understand what, what we're doing on Bolton Street but why I can explain go ahead that's why he's here yeah that's why I'm here so just to cover the MS4 program we're one of 30 MS4 communities in the state of Maine because um, the river because mm -hmm. the river so it's um, Maine DOT this this outfall is the last outfall last major project we have to do and what it I, is I thought that I thought the last outfall was was Sawmill, Sawmill Road out for It was on Moulton Street, Sawmill Hill, yeah, up there. No, this is, that was only, that was the second. Yeah, that was, that okay. was the least expensive. Right, yeah, <laughs> that was the easy push, one. Push this one off. Um, so <clears throat> I, I kind of, I had the same question on how do you get to $1.3 million. Um, one thing, the engineering costs up front, that's the cost. There's going to be a full depth reconstruction for Moulton Street. Why? Uh, it's needed. It, 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 the way it was explained was we're going to be digging up all the infrastructure there to put new storm drains in from Copeland Street all the way down through. And the, the, the road itself is averaging about 18 feet wide. So by the time you're done digging up half of it for your pipe and everything it doesn't make sense not to do the whole thing right so and then so this is all all the piping you need right here this is all piping piping these are um catch basins catch basins piping. so at the same time do we do water and sewer i, I if, think yeah if there's if there's infrastructure that needs to be changed out they will both the sewer and water have been involved in talking to the engineers so Right, so, so what happens is the, the, the um, there's a sidewalk that's built in, uh, and the curbing helps to guide the water into those catch basins. Yeah. So it's integrated with, it's integrated with the, the park plan. And Malone and McBroom actually did a good job of you look at the design they have. So this is a little bit different than what Cornelius put together, but it's it's they have a system that is an alternative to it. So instead of water, just the salt water going directly from the road into the Salmon Falls River, it's now filtrated. It's going through a silver cell. It's going, right. going into a silver cell, right? More or less, yeah. yeah they they had a couple they different... They put a tree in the silver cell. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's they, they had a couple different you know, options that they were looking at yeah. for, for treating it. We deal with it all the time. And it, whatever. Yeah. So. Does that seem like a high number to you? Jesus, yeah. I mean, how many feet of road? Oh, goodness. I think they you said something like 1,200 feet or something. I know when we talked to our, our Christy Vasca, so she thought a half a million. And then when this number came in. 1.2. Yes. Yeah, well, really. we just did some updates and change orders because of what we were asking to have done. And it's now 1.3. So, so we got to wait. So we're gonna wait till there's a recession. Can't do it in a car. Well, it's right coming now. from all right here, so. <laughs> Not yet. As, as the feds, you know. There's a recession coming. Yeah, recession. Well, we've got to wait till one because there's so much work right now. 
We're not going to get a good price. It's going to be a high price. Yeah. So we're going to well, wait till the start. This won't go to construction until 21, 22. Yeah, that's only a couple of years away. Yeah, it's only a couple of years away. So if you have a recession come January, which I heard on NPR today, we'll be in good time. So, but even then, I don't like the talk. <laughs> even then, it's an expensive. If it isn't have done by twenty twenty two, what what's up? What's the what happens? Fines. Fines. We, we're required to do it. That's we'll, the federal we'll government. Start getting fined. Maybe they can send a check our way if they require us to do something. Yeah, like, well, Christ. Ask about all the unfunded mandates we get. You know. um, so that, that's a, quite a project. But so what do we do? We we gonna try to well, we bond I, all this? I'd like to see what we can find for grants and, yeah. and from EDA, from CDBG funding, yeah. um, and then from possible rural development. We can combine it. Um, so uh, there's, there's supposed to be some money coming from the federal government uh, for these kinds of projects. King and Collins just put it forward. And I think it, I don't know if it's been through the Senate or not, but uh, I'm hoping that by that time we'll have access to that kind of funding. But between James and I and, and uh, Rick Vandenberg has done quite a bit of grant writing with you. I feel confident that we might be able to get some, but there's no guarantee. And it, we may have to, you know, finance parts of it, uh, but I'm not sure how much. Um, and that's that project. Um, the other one is, uh, last week I got another bridge report from MDOT on Midland Road and uh, Diamond Hill. And then this, the other one was the, the key, key Bridge, which key is bridge. A, just a big culvert, and that we can take care of. That's just... Where where what road is that on? It's that, at the uh, other end. Yeah. It's the okay, key yeah. I thought that had been replaced a, you know, a while it ago. May have. It, we, what I read it again today, it's it's just uh, guardrails we have to fix. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know what bridge you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, the culvert was replaced when they did the uh, road. the the road for the when the turf farm turf went farm, in the went in there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've asked Robert to get me a price and go out and look at it. And, see what we need to do to fix that. That's an easy fix. Um, it's the, Diamond Hill is the bridge I worry about. We could close the bridge at, on Ridland Road. It's a, we don't use it during the winter. Um, we could put, we can just close it. People have to Pedestrians it. only. Because the turf farm is closer to uh, Hubbard Road. So yeah, they, they come, with, they come to the other end. It. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it might help. Steve Just Ralph post some signs, no through way. So, and, that, and that's my recommendation. It's not to put any money into that right now. But yeah, I agree. We'll get, we might get some pushback, but. They can fix it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They want to raise funds for it. And then it's one some house lots in there, then they can fix the they bridge. Fix the what bridge. would it cost to fix it? Uh, half a million? Half a million dollars each, roughly. Between five and 600,000. If you go look at those, just stop sometime and get underneath the bridge. You might not it's want to pretty, it's pretty scary. Yeah. I, I traveled on that road a couple times all the way through. It's, I mean, it's really not even that travelable. I mean, it's, yeah. it would definitely not be worth it. Yeah, we don't grade it. Put that, it. put that amount of money into a road that you can barely go down. You need a front end alignment or struts. It's a good road to go yep. down. <laughs> yeah. So um, the program that the DOT has is, a, is a, so this bridge, it's a 50-50 match. If they, if they have the funding, there's no guarantee that they'll have it. Um, and it's not a high priority on their programs. It, uh, just it's a small bridge and uh, not that much traffic. Diamond Hill gets plenty of traffic, um, and that's the one uh, when you really need to focus on to fix. But again, it's uh, we probably going to have to pay to get design work done, so we have a better idea of cost and uh, go from there. State doesn't doesn't do anything with that. No. So um, something that's on our radar. The other, the other um, stuff that's coming up is the downtown traffic study and renovation costs uh, for our sidewalk work and um, all of that. Yeah, we've, we're in a position where we've applied for grants uh, and James and I are planning on submitting an uh, application for the CDBG. Um, and we'll have to get funding approval for matching funds. Um, but that's 
quite a bit of money as well when the sidewalks put this at the foot. It's, it's 60 linear foot with curbing? Yeah. Something like that, 60 or 80. So it's, if you want to start doing these kind of projects, we have to start scheduling them. There's no TIF money. We don't have any TIF money. We don't have any TIF money. Any right TIF. now we're negative in the TIF with the adjustments we had to make. About the impact fees. But this, the minute we start. Okay. Uh, we have nothing for him. If we start prime, we should really yeah. plan on doing something. If someone decides to buy meeting. prime and they start doing work, I think then that's where we should start. Yeah. Incrementally. I, I think we can push whoever the developer is to do the sidewalks around the, the perimeter. Yeah. Uh, but we'll have to do the sidewalks on the out, out of line, like Wilson Street, uh, all of this. Um, and, uh, but it's uh, something that we really need to plan for. Um, I mean, you know, the state rep is, is, is they of any help to us? The state? State rep, our state rep? No, there's no money, because I know of. But I'll talk to Beth, but uh, I, I, yeah. DOT is where most of the money is, and is a, that's very, very competitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the DOT was canceling contracts early well, this year. Things were coming in too high, so they right. had money left over. Right. Yeah. Well, right uh, we, were, we were told, at, uh, I was told at a CATS meeting last week that um, right now, like the money that we got for planning was money that they had just for that. This, this coming year, they don't have any money extra for stuff like that. So... Um, and to give you some insight into that, we uh, James put together a real nice presentation for CATS. That's the local uh, MPO for road work. The whole York County gets under, just under $800,000 a year and to do road work for the towns that participate. All the money we send up there, we only get 800000 yeah. No, we don't even this get that. A, <laughs> it comes from the feds. It doesn't come from the state. So um, right now, what we put an application in for was the Sawmill Hill uh, project, yeah. and that's priced at around 485000 I think. Um, and they would only give us enough money to do the, the uh, drawings. Um, drawings? Yeah. Um, Bert, uh, York, which is... Coastal communities. <laughs> calm down, calm down. <laughs> Coastal communities get a lot of the money. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And New York uh, is getting the bulk of, of this 21, 22 money, right? Why is that? 2021. Why is that? Why is that? It's, uh, they score the projects, and we were number two, I thought, and New York was number one. And the argument was that we didn't have any plans yet. And uh, only renditions and, and recommendations, and uh, they felt that uh, by the time we got all that done and go through the whole DOT process, it'd be 2023 before we could do anything anyway. I believe me. It was very How was your blood pressure? <laughs> pretty high, um, and I argued that that's that's not true. I don't buy that for one moment. I know we can get plans drawn up. But we have plans in a couple months. Yeah, exactly. And in uh, the DOT process, it's, it's not a big project for DOT to approve. So, uh, but York got the bulk of it. So we'll come back next year. Yeah, well, I think we should hold our state reps right to the feet to the fire. I mean, it's about time she went to bat for some of this crap. Yeah. I know I heard uh, today we had some uh, company called Du Bois and King. James and I have talked to them before. They're an engineering firm that does regular civil engineering projects, but they also have an economic development part of their business, and they help us write grants and, and secure really? money. They just finished a project up in Rangeley, the airport project, yeah. which was quite a few million to extend the line and to change some of the roads. And they said that uh, that came to no cost because of our federal representatives, King and uh, Collins. So that's another avenue that we should look at but for that particular project. But um, the, the LED lighting is one that's I would like to see figure out a way to get this. Oh, I'd like to see that done too. Done quickly. Yeah. The, the savings. You save 30 grand a year? Yeah. It's, so uh, we could, um, I'm not sure how to 
want to do that. But we need we need a little over ninety thousand dollars. Ninety-six thousand to to do the project. Uh, Didn't you say that we could, we, by applying the savings, we could just do like a normal bank loan, not even have to do a bond issue situation? Yeah, we, we, could, we could get a short loan, but again, it has to go before the voters. You know, I can't, I can't spend money unless the voters tell me I can. Mm. You can. So uh, we could put that on November ballot. I'm already tra drafting warrants for that. Something that we can consider if you, if you want me to do that, I'll put it on the ballot. Yeah. If we're just doing a, sh I mean, with the with the savings, I mean, pay off the whole thing in three and a half years. Yeah. yeah. You know, even with interest. Right. And, and the company that we've been talking to says that most of the towns are doing it that way. They're going out and borrowing the money. The banks will support it because they know they're getting yeah. they're getting uh, the payoff really quickly. Right. So. If you want me to do that, just give me direction to do that, and then I'll put something on the ballot. For me. I, I think we should put I it think on the we ballot, need to. guys. Okay. Yeah, you know, it is I'd, I'd like to be able to you know, do it sooner, but is is we have to, you know, like you said, get it approved. Yeah. If we had had this information a little bit quicker, it would be, we could have put it into this year's budget, but uh, we just didn't have the information. You know, we didn't have the stuff on the tanks. We didn't have the information on. on uh, Building work that we need to have done, we could ho hopefully wrap some of that all together. But what uh, James and I are going to try and do is, is, on some of these bigger projects, we're going to try to put together the applications for the grant money and, and get a cost and, and see if we can um, get some funding to do some of this work. So I think the total, the infrastructure grant from CDBG is up to half a million dollars or more so uh, and rural development has grant money for that too from what I've been reading so and I know some of them, but they, they only they don't fund the whole thing they'll fund part of it with grant and part of it with loans but uh, I, I think that's the way to do this if we, if we can um, I think the infrastructure stuff um, for the bridges the MS4 the sidewalk work. I'd like to combine that all together if I could, and see if we can get get it parceled out that way. If that's sounds like it makes sense to you. Um, going back to the uh, LED lights, did uh, they ever get back in touch with you about doing a tour of the town buildings? Yeah, they never did. I haven't seen. Them. Yeah. I'll, I'll give them a call. Yeah. Should do that. Yeah. Right. The pl uh, police department has is is wants to be in on that. Uh, water department's already done it. I think Roland did it. Uh, Roland said he could do it here. So it's an easy thing what to do. What about the sewer? Uh, I don't do the sewer. So I don't ask them. I can find out if they've done it. They may have done it already. What is, um, have they started to tear down the, the school yet? No. No, they, they did the abatement inside. They it's haven't done. The Estabrook school he's talking about. Oh yeah, we're waiting. I called. I talked to CMP today. Uh, Roland, uh, they called Roland. Uh, he's not ready to, to do that. Everything's ready inside the police station to move the power, which is what we have to do. That's what we're waiting for. And uh, he s submitted his state application, which CMP said he had to do. Uh, none of the contractors or architects never heard of doing a state application for that permit. Right. It's kind of weird, but we, um, so it's, it might be a couple of weeks out. And Will Rayno has a contract. Yeah. Um, and he uh, said he could have it down in a week and a half, all of it. All cleaned I've up. I had a lot of people calling me about, he's moved all the stuff out of the Estherport. And a lot of people want, are calling about the desks. They'd like to have some of the school desks. And, and the way the contract reads for demolition, and he, everything that's left in that building belongs to Will. And if they're going to have to check with him if they will be to let them. Did you get the stuff out of there you wanted? No, I never got to. Well, uh, we can do that. It, it is, 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 I was going to coordinate with uh, Paul Beauvais, but is I went on vacation, and while I was on vacation, he became sick. And he's Who been did? Paul oh, Beauvais. Is he okay? No. What's the matter with him? 
um, is they think it might be a type of encephalitis. He was down in Mass General in a coma, the last I heard. Always? Uh, yeah. Is, um, I basically, he's like, basically coma. I, I've seen, I saw a picture, he has eyes open, but he's not really... Like right. He, he, he's responsive, I guess, is, I, I guess is what they said. Is, basically, but, but basically... Yeah, no. it, they, they think it was some type of encephalitis. Encephalitis. It's a swelling of the... Swelling of the brain. Like East the brain. West Nile virus is... Like, uh, it, could be, it could be a number of things. Mosquitoes, things mosquitoes ticks, ticks, you know. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. I yeah. emailed Alex today to see if I can get an update. Yeah. How long has he been down at Mass General? Going on a, a month. A month, yeah. Close to a month now. So yeah. Anyway, um, so we'll, we'll push in that direction. Um, anything else we want to bring up? If that's what direction you want to give me, then that's we'll, we'll start down that path. Yeah. yeah. We'll I, I, all together. And, See if we can get some fun. No, definitely get the uh, changing over the street lights to LED. You know, yeah. get that, we'll that take on. on. Yeah. I may, if, if we're going to submit a CDBG grant letter of intent, I've got to put on uh, that we're willing to fund the 20%. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll get that on the warrant for November. You guys have to sign the warrant. Uh, the uh, last meeting of August. You have to have a, we'll have a hearing. Oh, yeah, because we meet the second week of September now. Yeah, we used to be able to do it on the first meeting of yeah. September. So we'll talk about it. I'll get it all done for our next meeting so you can read it publicly. Um, but I think we should have that on it because they'll be looking to see if we have approval. Right. And, and hopefully by that time, uh, we know what's going across the street because they look very favorably on the fact that we're partnering possibly with them contractor. It's usually what works in our favor. It gives us a lot of points. So in, in the process. Um, otherwise that's it. Directly we did talk about impact fees with the DJ. Uh, we cannot use we have to keep the funding for um, open space in open space. Right, we can't move it from account to account. Right. We can only use it for, for new projects. We can't use any of that funding, uh, recreation, or, or open space for any current maintenance types of projects. Right. So we couldn't use it for sidewalks or anything like that. So that's we, that's the funding that we already have, though. Yeah, we can change the percentages and right. from right. Yeah, you could yeah. yeah well, I want to I want to I want to get that on uh, first yeah, we meeting can, we can change in it August to, to, do to that direct change. it to a different right. different fund. But the funds that are already in there, we can't yeah. redirect. Yeah, right. And they have to be spent within 10 years of the t time they. Yeah. Been I don't see a problem with that. Uh, no, we only really <laughs> have a problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have an opportunity to, I think, coming to purchase some back acreage next to Memorial Field, and uh, DJ said we could use the open space to purchase that. Because we're not already in a deficiency when it comes to rec fields. We're yeah. not in deficiency. We're not. Based off of the, I would think we are. Based yeah. off the standards of per, you know, we are, we are a town of approaching 8,000. We need to have X yeah, amount of acres of brick fields. Yeah. And we have that. We have that. Yeah. yeah. Which means then now we can go out and purchase more based off the added growth. The town doesn't have any land available for solar. Well, well, yes and no. The buildings, right? The buildings. Uh, we no, no flat land, no, no 10 acre parcel. Or not that I know of. Nothing that I know. No. We do have, we have random uh, parcels. parcels that the town owns, but I don't know I how. I need to say, they, when they were see, I've been visited twice, so I've talked, to, I took the opportunity to talk to the people about it. And they want it, they don't want a random parcel, they want a continuous parcel. Okay, yeah. Right. They want big acres. They want, yeah. At yeah. least ten. It's a minimum of ten. But we're above twenty-five, and it they, really it's a thousand bucks an acre a year is what they pay you. There's some big acreage next to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants to come by and well, buy I mean, that. With the fire station going in and the police station, they both face south. So those would be really ideal for um, 
solar, solar power. power. And, and same with this building. It doesn't matter which way they face. The yeah, you can, you can angle them, yeah. Say, yeah. But, yeah, but those... those are big enough, the panels will actually move on their own. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, so the panels will actually... Fall. Right, yeah, you, if you want to spend the money, yeah. <laughs> Well, it, we've, we've discussed it when we were talking to the, the architects and engineers at the fire station about that. And uh, is, uh, you know, we're, not, we're not doing anything right now, but the potential's there you know, to use the rooftop of the new station and the police station, but also that other piece that's isolated in the back there, yeah. you know, where the, in the back corner, yeah. you know, yeah. can put some up in there. And, and, you know, they explained to us that, you know, if, if we do any kind of solar like that, is we can use the power from there to offset nine different accounts in the town. So, okay, so it goes directly to the grid. Right. And that just offsets whatever. Right. But then we can, we, can, we can offset, you know, nine different sites, you know, so we could do the fire station, the police station, the town hall, public yeah. works, you know, those types of things, you know. Is um, so <coughs> big piece of property right out here. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, if you look at it, and actually the uh, the the developers we've been talking to, they've talked about that you know being a prime site for you no know, solar. So have you put the like the kid from that prime electric or whoever it was? Remember the guy that won that? Yeah, that's a, he's so good he, to ask. So he's been, but he he. You hooked him up with, uh, not Mark, uh, John and Cindy. Cindy. Have we done that? I will. Yeah. I mean, yeah, anyone that's been in, you yeah. should hook them up. Just yeah. To, yeah. Absolutely. We yeah. Have, we have a meeting next week with another really positive uh, company, James and Rick. I think Rick knew who they were. Uh, it's, it's the main company. Uh, yeah, looking forward to meeting with them. I'm not going to talk about it publicly, but. Well, they um, they could nope. be a good answer. Is the blue side building still slated for marijuana production? Nope. Well, so because, no, it's still not an allowed use. Um, but this, yeah, the company next week, uh, it's a manufacturing company. They manufacture a product that will fit right in with the brand that we're trying to establish. And it's something that would be an anchor tenant and uh, there'd be supporting businesses that could flourish around it. So. Yeah. Very exciting. The contractor that we're talking to, um, in my conversation with him, is that he wants to buy all the property and he wants nothing to do with this marijuana. You mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. Where is this? Well, I haven't been around the last two meetings. Where is, where is Mark in all this? Lost. Well, Mark, Mark met with them. We met with him in early June. Early June, yeah. And uh, he actually paid this contractor a visit. He was up there visiting, talking with them. In Gorham? In Gorham, in yeah. Gorham. And he came back really pumped about this couple. So um, he, I got, I got the impression that they were going to try to work out some kind of partnership. I think that's what Mark would like to do. But this, Mark has also said that he'll sell the property for the right price. And um, I think that's what you'll see. This company wants to buy. Okay. Yeah, they want they want to control they what happens. Control. They don't want to deal with it. And and, and uh, who would? No, it is 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 as they explained to us before. You know, is John's the construction guy. His daughter Julie's the marketing, and and Cindy has the vision. And she said she she knows she already has a vision of what she would like to see out here. Mm. And uh, yeah, they asked for all the surrounding properties for development opportunities and there I think there's 16 different lots that have development opportunities that are either for sale been for sale people we've talked to yep. mm. some of them are on the market but we know that uh, people might be interested in oh selling. yeah so you can throw a baseball to all of them yeah right I'm area. on the market you want to sell my market. sell me <laughs> <laughs> landscape business nursery have at it <laughs> yeah yeah so, so. It's encouraging. <coughs> I don't get too excited until I know what's going on. Yeah. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it is what it is until it actually happens. Yep. So right now we have yeah, we three empty buildings, is. four empty buildings. Yep. <laughs>
But this this group the case is spray paint. We <laughs> sent them the list of people who are interested already uh, yeah. and all their contact information. And uh, we will send them uh, you you haven't given them Kyle's stuff yet, have you? Just they're just aware of that. Yeah. But okay, the company that we're meeting with next week, if it's a, it seems like it's something they're interested in doing and if they don't mind, we'll give them the contact information. Um, and that will we won't tell Mark, but we'll just hopefully make it more palatable to them. There's such a huge market for buildings that are empty. If that big brick cement building was empty, there's a huge market right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's unbelievable. Yep. He just, it's sitting there. Yep. Yep. The thing is, is, we went through a lot of work to make sure that uh. that was a viable piece of property, and there's only one person that's made out on that so far, and that's the one who's holding the title to it. Yep. Yeah. So we just need to remove that one common denominator somehow, if we can, yep. in a feasible manner. Is that what he wants for that? Is two million? There's uh, been a couple of different, <laughs> couple of different prices put out there. Is I he he had said something to me one, you know, about two point two for everything, Come on. you know. But is he's also offered other pieces of it to other people for less money than that, and so who knows. <clears throat> John and Cindy are aware of that. So I said, that, that gives you the range of what he's looking for. And so you can barter with them. I think they're probably pretty good at it. So uh, they'll, they'll be fine. Well, he knows the town's vision. He knows that people want that to happen. You know, well, so that's a value. He knows there's value in that. Yeah. And he's a businessman. And his whole purpose is to recoup his investment and then some. It has nothing to do with rebuilding the town. It's about his investment and him making a buck. That's all it is. Berwick is not on his priority list, as far as I'm concerned. Who's that? Mark's. Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, uh, we'll just keep... I, I feel if we're sending people to them, they're going to yeah, get a response. Yeah, that's what I think. That's why I'm saying I'll send you all you can send. Yeah. Yeah. To them. I know, it's just like we've been bed down the merry road in, huh? I, 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 oh, I guess it's, road, it's hard not to be pessimistic, oh. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it really it's brutal. There was so that. much with, with Envision Berwick and all that energy and all the charrettes and all the stuff. He that, came, I mean, when he came in, he was pumped. Yeah. Yeah. He, he led us down sure. the merry road to get sure. this cleaned up. And that's all he did. He was a great salesman at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, I love but either way, e either way, Somehow, if we didn't do it, we would have a piece of property yeah. in which nobody would ever, no, ever, would, ever do no, take ownership of. Yeah, we did it the only way we could. Yeah, yeah. it is what it is, but it just, yep. it really it pisses me off. He screwed yep. us up. But Tom, our time. So, it's just frustrating. Right. Any, anything so, else? That's all I have. You've given me my marching orders. And, uh, is he the second town manager or third town manager? Third. Third town well, manager. Four, well, because we dealt with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> four. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, a prime. I'm talking about prime. Yeah. Is yeah. Fourth town manager we've been doing? Uh, I, yeah, Patrick, I think so. uh, what, um, Stenhouse. Yeah. Stenhouse, he died. Yeah. Stenhouse Bruce. and... Uh, Bruce Benwine. Patrick. Uh, before that, who Gary. was here before Patrick? Yeah, but we, I'm talking about the Stenhouse. Gary. Gary Stenhouse. Yeah. Yeah, poor yeah. Gary, Good he name, died. Mm. Wish I'd known him. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, Goal is to get this all done, or at least before I go. Mm -hmm. Tom wants more, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't want to have to hire another town manager. Oh God! All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Any questions?